everybody, what is up? Welcome back to another video. This must be like my thing today, punch my hands. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna talk about what is wrong with your practice routine, which might seem kind of like an aggressive statement. But um, I know from being a teacher, I get asked a lot, you know, I get messages all the time, comments, what do I practice? How do I practice? When should I practice? I mean, just lots of stuff about practice. And what I found uh, that worked well for me, like I've been teaching now for about maybe like 10 years, something like that, a, a little while, I've been teaching a little while. <laughs> and um, I found some things that really help practice. I know that they help me a lot for practice. So first of all, if you think I just suck at guitar, then don't listen to my practice routine because <laughs> this is not this is not the video you want to watch. But if you like the way I play or you know you like the lessons, maybe just kind of hear me out on some of this stuff and see how that goes. So for today, I'm going to be teaching you a lick with each section that I talk about. So you can download those tabs down below in the description. You can check out my free guitar course if you want to. And we're just going to go ahead and jump into this one. So like I said, make sure you get your guitars in hand and let's learn about building a practice routine and maybe what's wrong and why some practice routines don't work. All right, so number one is what is your goal and what are you trying to get out of it? So like I said, I'm gonna show you a lick. So here's what we're gonna be learning and I'm gonna kind of break down a couple things here for you. So this is a very good exercise. It's kind of a chromatic -y idea, but um, it's still based out of, you know, pretty much your Aeolian slash Dorian mode. So we're gonna go like this. <laughs> Okay, so there's the idea. I think I might have put it all as picking. You can pick it all if you want. But what I'm talking about, when I'm saying something like this, is just playing for the sake of playing and, and not having any kind of direction is a really hard, hard thing to you know get a lot of progress on. You know, just because you've played a lot of hours on the guitar doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get better at what you're working on. So for me, I was always a little bit more. I guess just kind of like analytical about things. Like I, I like to see like what, what am I visualizing here? And something I'm gonna kind of reiterate here in a minute is the fact of don't just learn the lick, learn the concept. I'm gonna talk about that again here in a minute. But like with what I just played here. So let's break down what I'm playing and I'm gonna you know kind of explain what I mean by this. So when I'm going like this, what am I trying, you know, what's my goal with this lick? What am I trying to get out of it? So I'm starting out, like I said, I'm kind of viewing this all being A minor, whether it kind of ventures into Dorian or Aeolian. Let's not worry about that just yet. We're gonna go eight to five on the high string, and then you're gonna go um, six, five, six on the B, and then five on the high string. So. Now, like I said, you can pick it all if you want to. You can pull off hammer on. I'm not really, you know, from a technique side, find which whatever one you want to work on and do that one. So that's the first part of it. Now, all I do is I alternate from the eight to seven on the high string. Okay, so I'm going. Now, what am I trying to get out of just this first one? I'm trying to get use of all my fingers. I'm trying to build up finger independence. And I want to be able to use all four fingers. I know I use these th three fingers a lot, but I want to be able to use all four. You know, whenever I want to. So I'm trying to build up finger independence, but I'm also trying to do it in a musical lit kind of way. Now the next one, I only alter one note. So I go like this. Now what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go um, eight to five, but then seven, five, seven on the beat. And then five on the high string. That's pretty much it. Now, of course, maybe your goal is a picking idea to get your fingers, you know, more coordinated with each other. That's another goal to have. Like I said, this is my idea. I'm just thinking out, uh, you know, out of the terms of building finger independence. I'm trying to work all four of my fingers in a way that's not just going like this. You know, that the classic chromatic thing. Now, the fourth and final one here is this. I'm going to go eight to five on the high string, but I go eight to five on the B. So this is a really good one for your pinky. That still goes seven. Again, a really good exercise, and it, it's working on all my fingers. I'm leading with different fingers. Like I said, look, leading with my middle finger there, leading with my ring finger, leading with my pinky. So there's a lot of different areas that this is going to help my left and right hand. So that's my goal with this one, finger independence. I have an objective. I'm not just learning something for the sake of learning it. I'm learning it, and I'm trying to you know, use it and understand why I'm learning it. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about executing what you're practicing 
and getting good at the concept. You kind of heard me hint on that with the last one. Now what I'm talking about with your practice routine is make sure that you are concep conceptually, well that's a hard word to say, you know, understanding what it is that you're doing. You know, like I said, it's not just a lick, because if you if you learn something and practice it one way, and you never try to really understand how you're playing it, you're always just gonna play it that one way. You know, like I said, and for me, I always, I kind of focused more on the concept. You know, maybe I couldn't play the lick at a million miles an hour, but the idea behind it, I was like, oh, I like, maybe it's a big interval or something like that. So make sure whatever you're putting in your practice routine, you're, you're really focused on concept. Very concept heavy stuff, I think, is, is really crucial. So the lick that we're gonna do is this one. Um, oh, let me do that again cleaner. Okay? So behind that, there is a concept, but we're actually going to break it down a little bit into a more common idea. And that is this, and this one's not tabbed out, but I'll, I'll break it down, and the other one is tabbed out. Very similar, right? It's a little bit different. Bigger interval there. So what I'm doing on this first one is I'm simply playing six, it's all out of A minor, so six on the B, and then five, seven, eight on the high string. Okay? So there's the lick. I move up, and I'm gonna go eight, seven, eight, ten. Then I shift up again, ten, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, so we have those three things there. Now, if I just learned that as a lick, already, I, I like the way it sounds, it's very melodic, it has a cool sound to it, but what's the concept here? I'm not trying to go into theory, because there is theory behind what I'm doing as well, but the overall concept, or just understanding the shape of it. Now, what I'm seeing here is I'm playing one note on the B string, three notes on the high E string, so I'm still getting a nice four note sequence. So my mind starts turning, I'm like, you know what? I like the way things sound with bigger intervals. So I start trying out different notes, still keeping the concept the same. One. Maybe I'm like, okay, what if I went? Maybe. Oh, no, the same note. That's not going to work. Oh, skip strings. Maybe you could do one lick and skip strings all over the place. You know, again, my mind's just kind of rolling right now. But what I came up with was this. You know, it's a simple variation, but an important one. Seven, and then five, seven, eight. So that seven's on the G. So I skip the B completely now, and I'm going to the high string. Now I shift up again, nine on the G. Seven, eight, ten. And then I'm gonna go to 10 on the G. Eight, 10, 12. Okay? So on with that one. So okay, so we have all of that working, and that's just the concept behind. It. Like I said, you know, there was intent and purpose behind what I was practicing, and I I made sure that mentally I was understanding what was happening. Because you could take something like this and move it all over the place now, or maybe reverse it. Like I said, maybe you want three notes on the B, you know, some kind of combination of it. But make sure that whatever you're practicing you know, you're really just grasping what it is that you're playing. It's not just notes, it's not just a lick, there's an idea behind it. Make sure you understand that idea. So next, with your practice routine, are you applying it? Like I said, you can spend decades practicing stuff, but unless I think you're applying it in a musical situation, then, at least in, you know, in, in my opinion, that's kind of the end goal of learning this stuff, right? That's what we're playing guitar. We like music, you want to play music. Uh, most people aren't just playing guitar for the sake of playing guitar, it's because we all have this common bond that we love music. So, are you applying what you know? So what I have here for you is this concept of outlining chords. Now, say that you have learned a, a very, um, very simple arpeggio, you know, a G major arpeggio. Now, the idea that I'm going to show you is this. But what am I doing here? So, like I said, say that you learned this little arpeggio. Now, I'm trying to apply this in a musical way. and I'm, I'm doing something, this is kind of leaning back on theory a little bit more, but I'm playing chords. Now, what I'm doing is I'm outlining a G major, you know, scale, I'm, the chords of the scale. Don't fit up here. 
like I said, I'm trying to apply it. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm applying it by outlining chords. Make sure that whatever you're doing, you know, once you learn this lick, I, I always re actually recommend people practicing stuff. Like if you're playing out of a key of A, B, whatever it is, find a droning track. You know, on YouTube, there's tons of them in any key you can think of. And just have something in the background. Because it's like when you play a pentatonic scale, for example. If I just play this scale right here, uh, and I'm playing E major, you know, it just kind of sounds like the scale, but if I give it a droning note, listen to how much better that sounds. It sounds musical all of a sudden, and, and I'm applying it now, because then what happens is my ear kind of starts taking over. start playing more musically and that's the way it is with this stuff when you learn a lick and you have it under your fingers find either a droning track to try to play it over something or maybe you have a looper whatever it is but this one what I'm doing here is I'm outlining uh, four different chords I have a G major so I'm simply going three on the low E string two five on the A and I do octaves on all of them it's one idea and I multiply it by three by using octaves so I go five on the D and then four and seven on the G Eight on the B, seven, ten on the high string. So, and what happens is I do another one where I'm going to do A minor. So, five, and then three to seven on the A string. Now this is A minor, like I said, octave. The shape stays the same the whole time. Seven, and then five to nine on the G. Then I go up, eight, and then ten to twelve on the B. Okay, so. You could descend them if you want. Now for picking, I'm going down, down, up. This is just kind of what's working for me. B minor's next. Same exact thing as the D minor, just um, uh, A minor, just up two frets. So we're gonna go seven, and then five, nine, an octave, nine, seven, eleven, another octave, oh, sorry, <laughs> 12, 10, 14. Classic B string, ruining everything. Final one is C major right here. I'm gonna start on uh, eight. I'm gonna go eight and then seven to ten, an octave, ten, nine, twelve, and then thirteen, twelve, fifteen. And then that's it. And you have it. So that's the whole concept there. But like I said, I'm applying it in a very musical way because I'm outlining chords now. I'm not just playing a lick over a stationary key. I'm applying it to these chords, and you can keep going with it. Like I said, I, you know, I could easily keep going. D major would be next, E minor, and then diminished. So it's a cool thing to do. Like I said, make sure that whatever you're practicing, you're also applying it musically. All right, so the final thing here we're going to talk about is, actually it's kind of like three things all rolled up into one. I went charting your progress. Is a huge thing. If you're not doing that, man, it, it's such a beneficial thing. Uh, mentally challenging yourself, which the example is going to be based around that. And then also not getting burnout. Now let's talk about the burnout thing real quick before I play the lick. And the burnout topic, what I mean by this is don't, don't have the same practice routine every single day. You know, I, I always would compare it for my students to like if you're a, a weightlifter. Like I'm, I'm obviously not some weightlifter, but... I know for a fact that there is leg day, arm day, back day, you know, all these different days. Now, they might still work out some of the other muscles, but they're obviously leaning heavier on that. So I would recommend having days where you lean a little bit heavier on different topics. Uh, maybe you still practice everything in a more general aspect, but there's just one topic that you're really focused on that day. Because what happens is you build up this negative relationship with a lick that you're you know learning maybe you've played it so much you get to the point where you're sick of it and then I feel like that has to you know hinder your ability to comfortably just call on that lick because you have such a you know, kind of bad taste in your mouth about it so if I played this lick and I was from my god I'm so sick of playing this lick but I forced myself to do it every single day I feel like I'm not going to willingly like subconsciously go to that you know maybe you will maybe I'm wrong but this is just kind of how I always looked at that stuff. So I always make sure that I was breaking up my practice routine with one day I'm really heavy on picking, next day I'm doing some legato, next day I'm doing some arpeggios, next day it's more of a, like I said, mental focus. And, and I still practice all of them each day, 
but I was heavier focused on each one. So that's the first little tip there. Now, the um, charting your progress and mental aspect. So the lick is this. <laughs> which might not seem like much, and it might just seem like a scale, but I'll, I'll tell you why it's a mental practice for me. And um, charting your progress, I, I tell people so much, please record yourself playing guitar. That way in six months, you can go back and look at it, and, and then you can literally realize how much better you are. This is another area where using a metronome is really powerful because, you know, in, in guitar, you see yourself playing guitar every single day. So you don't, you don't always see these leaps and bounds in your playing. You know, but if you're using a metronome, you have literally physical data. You have numbers that, you know what, you know, two weeks ago, I couldn't play this lick at 100 BPM, you know, in eighth notes. Uh, but now I'm at 120 with eighth notes and I'm just like, it's no, no big deal. So, you know, some kind of, you know, progress chart is really, really good for that kind of thing. Now, why this is a mental challenge for me. Something I always like to do is um, take a scale. So we're, we're simply doing a C major scale here. Okay, so if you don't know your C major scale, make sure you got that on your fingers. But the lick is this. I'm gonna go 10 on the low E string, and then I'm going to go eight, uh, sorry, eight, 10, 12. Look, I'm using that pattern from the first one, but I'm doing it across six strings. And then 10 on the D, nine, 10, 12 on the G, 12 on the B, 10, 12, 13. Okay, so. Now here's where the mental challenge is. What I like to do is I like to take my scale and try it basically like a point A to point B approach. And what I'm saying is I started here and I ended here. Now what I try to do is I come up with creative ways to get to that same point. Like I said, if I just played the scale, Boom, that's straight through it. It's like, okay, now how can I be more creative? How can I break it up so it doesn't just sound like I'm going straight through the scale anymore? So one of the patterns I do a lot, which is this one. Again, you can see how the concept of that first idea has carried over with me. And since I practice it and I, I like the sound of it, it comes naturally to me to apply it to other things. Versus. Here are ones very in line, you know, and the other one. I like the way that sounds, and I've taken this pattern and I apply it to pentatonic scales, uh, you know, all over the place. Now, like I said, challenge yourself that way. Like, even if I'm sitting here right now, try, I'm gonna try to come up with one on the spot. Um, you know, I, I could do something like this. What if I was like, okay, one, two, three, four. Oh, okay. That's, I literally have never done this before. <laughs> I'm actually pretty excited because I think it sounds cool. Um, but look, okay, I'm just mentally challenging myself. I'm like, what's another combination that you don't normally do? And I'll sit here and practice this. You know, and then I'll decide, am I gonna pick it all? Is there more pull-offs involved? I really like the way that sounds. I'm gonna like work on this and get this under my under my fingers. I'll show you the first pattern real quick before the cameras turn off. Uh, I'm going 10 to 8 on the A string, 10 on the low E string, and then 12. So I'm still doing a four note sequence, one, two, three, four, but it's the notes are bouncing back and forth. Actually, it feels more comfortable for me to do economy picking. And so on. So there you guys have it. Hopefully this was, you know, informative for you in some way. Like I said, it's not about me trying to necessarily build your practice routine for you. Everyone's going to be a different player. You can build your own. But with these four licks, like I said, hopefully it's maybe something you can incorporate into your own or you can scale them down or scale them up however you want. Scale them down, pun intended. Hey! So um, other than that, I'm going to bounce on out of here, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I, I always appreciate it so much. And get the tabs and the free guitar course, and uh, I'll just see you next time. So later, homies. Woo!